Okay, so time to demonstrate how the custom actions from scratch work when we want a little bit of a more complicated use case. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a couple of Airtable tables. And this one has a list of users from uh, which we're going to pick one, and that's going to be the person that we're calling. So after the personal says that uh, we should pull their preferences, then we're going to look in this table and we're going to look for the preferred location of the user, their budget, the preferred number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and then some additional details. Then with that information, if the user says that uh, it's okay for us to fetch for properties, we're going to look in this table and try to find which properties are matching the user's uh, preferences. So let's have a look first. I'm going to call Pablo and then uh, let's see if the data is pulled and also let's see if the uh, different properties are filtered and if the AI is doing a good job at that. So we're going to be using two different actions. This is the first one where we're going to be filtering the user housing preferences from Airtable and we're going to get a result of just one user. And then the second action that we're going to be using is this one to filter real estate properties from our table and based on the user preferences we're going to filter a list of records i'm going to do that in this assistant here where i have set up two different actions so we can see them here one is the one to filter the user housing preferences the other one filters the real estate properties i'm going to put here my details and now we're calling. I'm going to pick the call with my phone. Let's see. And there we are. Hello, Pablo. I am calling from Majestic Estates. I've seen you complete our form on the website. Do you want me to quickly pull up your user preferences so that we can look for houses that match your preferences? Yeah, sure. That sounds great. Great. Just a moment while I fetch your preferences. Hold on a second. Great, Pablo. I found your preferences. You're looking for a house in New York with a budget of $1,900,000, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and you'd like it to have a pool. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Let me find some properties that match your criteria. I've found a couple of options for you in New York within your budget. The first one is a spacious and modern condo priced at $800,000 with three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and it includes a garage. The second option is priced at $470,000. It's a beautiful condo in a great location, but has one bedroom and one bathroom. Would you like more details on the first option since it matches your preferences more closely? Mm, I actually think I might have a little bit more budget. Yeah, I want a better house. Oh, that's exciting. Building your own house gives you the freedom to customize everything just the way you want it. If you're thinking about increasing your budget and focusing on building, would you like some help finding a suitable plot of land or perhaps connecting with architects and builders in New York? Um, no, no. Actually, what I mean is that I just have a little bit more money to spend on an apartment or a condo or a house. Got it. Thanks for clarifying. With a bit more flexibility in your budget, we can definitely look into some more upscale options or properties with additional features that meet your needs. Would you like me to search for properties slightly above the one million nine hundred thousand dollar mark? Yeah, I think you have a specific new budget. Yeah, exactly. I, I do have a new budget. I think about four million. Let me find some upgraded options for you with the new budget. Just a moment. Just a moment while I update the search with your new budget of $4 million. Hold on a second. With your updated budget, I found a fantastic option that might catch your eye. There's a luxurious apartment in New York priced at $3,100,000. It features five bedrooms, four bathrooms, and it comes with a pool. Perfect for those hot summer days. Plus, it has all the premium features you could want. Does this sound like something you'd be interested in exploring further? Yeah, yeah, that one, that one sounds amazing. I'm glad to hear that. It does sound like a dream home. Would you like to schedule a viewing or perhaps speak with the seller to get more details about this luxurious apartment? Yeah, if I could speak with the seller, that, that would be great. 
Perfect. I can arrange for you to speak with the seller. Would you like me to set up a call for you? If so, could you let me know what times work best for you? Yeah, I'll let you know. I'll call you back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, so that worked. Okay, so now it's time to show you how these actions were set up. I'm going to hit edit and let's check all the different uh, parameters. So the name and the description and the speech are pretty simple. Then the URL is the base URL that we can take from the Airtable API re uh, reference, where we include the base ID and the table ID. To get the table ID and the base ID in Airtable, I just took them from the URL here. Then the next um, block include the, includes the properties. And this one is the only one that is a little bit trickier uh, because it, it actually requires that we know how to set up the formulas in Airtable. But this is also in the documentation. So if we go to the formulas uh, section and we read about it, or if we go to this tool called Airtable API URL encoder, we will learn how to set up the different formulas. In the case of a table, the way this works is that you need to append a query parameter to a URL called filter by formula. And then after filter by formula, you can include here all the different parameters that you want to filter. It's a little bit weird, but once you understand how that's set up, the only thing that you need to do is explain to the AI how, and this should be formatted in the JSON payload that uh, the AI is going to send to, to the Airtable API. So basically here we have the name of the query parameter, filter by formula, and here I'm explaining that the data is, an Airtable, is in an Airtable table, so it should basically send name equals whatever. In this case I put Ian, but it's, no, it's replacing Ian with the name of the user. So if you explain it properly here, the AI should be able to do a good job. I'm putting this as an example so that afterwards I can test the action. So when I click test action, uh, I'm sending name equals Ian, and that's why I'm getting the results particular to Ian. If I change this for, let's say, David, and I test the action again, I get the results particular to David. Then for the um, um, authorization. I know that in our table, again, because I looked at the API reference, I need to send a bearer token. So I went to my tokens table and I set up here a token that has the scope to read the Airtable records. Then for the headers, I'm just sending this basic one, uh, content type application JSON. I don't really need to send any additional parameters because this is not like a deep service like GHL where we need to send particular parameters. And also I'm not really sending any, any prompt because this is a fairly simple action. The other custom action to filter the real estate properties is a, a little bit more complicated, but still follows the same principles. So in this case, I wanted to test not having a speech. The URL is the same. The header, the authorization, the additional parameters, uh, don't change. I did include here a prompt, uh, but I've also tested without the prompt and it also worked well. In this case, the prompt is just kind of reassuring the, or like reinforcing what we want the AI to do. And in the properties, this uh, is still filter by formula because we know we need to send the constraints with this format after the filter by formula key value in the URL. And the description is just a little bit more detailed. So here I'm filtering by two different things. I'm filtering by city, I'm filtering by price. And we want the AI to uh, specify or like send the query parameter with this value. Why? Because this is the way that we filter in our table. It's going to change based on the API that you're using, but this is an example of how it would work here. So we know that if we're going to be filtering by two parameters at the same time, we're going to be using this expression. And, and then we're gonna do location equals something and price equal, uh, is higher or lower or equal to something. I specified that we need to replace the values with whatever matches the user preferences. And it understood that the thing that it needs to replace is New York and 
uh, 2 million. You could also just um, maybe be even more explicit and say replacing New York and 2 million with whatever uh, the location and the price that the user says uh, with with the price and the location that the user says. And I think that would work even better, but you saw that it worked with this prompt. We put here the example and it's the same thing. Uh, right now we have the 2 million here, that's why we're uh, filtering and getting a few results. But if we put here something like, let's say something smaller, let's do price lower than 10,000, 10, we're not going to get anything. If we test again, something like 1 million, we get again uh, different results, right? So you can see how changing here the example is already going to tell you if the, a, if the API call is going to work. And uh, that's it. Besides that, in the actual assistant prompt, what I'm doing is that I am just uh, setting up the different steps of the call, but they're fairly simple. So uh, we're just asking first to ask for the username and fetch the preferences. Then we execute this action to get the, the preferences, of course. And uh, then we ask the AI to wait until the user has confirmed that the preferences are correct. And I found that this is pretty important because we don't want the AI to automatically, after getting the preferences, already look for, for properties because then it looks super rushed. The AI starts interacting itself. Uh, it's better if we do it step by step and we ask the user to confirm. We execute this second custom action and that's it. And then I'm just telling the AI to choose the houses that match the user's preference. And focus especially on the preferred location and the budget. That's why it puts a little bit more emphasis uh, while it's talking on those two aspects. But you could change this if you want it and maybe focus more on, on others. Again, just like in GHL, uh, in the custom greeting, I'm already asking if we can get the user preferences, and that is because it's a little bit more natural, it's better. If you already start the call asking for the user preferences, then uh, you start the call with the custom action and everything is a little bit more fluid. And that's it, that's the end of this um, demo. I'm excited to see the different use cases that you come up with and see if we can keep tweaking this and maybe adding some more integrations.